You know, Bill, I I I make copies of or one oh uh hundred and eighty B if you have another text. not on our email list and wants to receive emails of changes of location, etc., please let me know. Time from the club is start. Assignments, a variety. What are you looking for? Hmm? good? Someone studies them after I record them. This will be worthwhile. After work, huh? Well, I'm not allowed to read it. I'm like, some people. Oh, I see, but you can have your phones in? Yeah. One, hello. Something that's away from the table. Uh -huh. we're disarranging it. That's what we used to do. Mm -hmm. It picks up pretty well. For a moment. <clears throat> As you were reading Phaedrus' speech, what do you notice about your reading and reflection? Because we were looking at a speech before last week, and I was interested in knowing what effect of any last week's work had on your present reading assignment and study of Phaedrus' speech. Thank you. Well, I was just nodding and agreeing with what, therefore, you'd say? Yes. It did what? <laughs> enhanced it. And enhance, that means <clears throat> if you're left-handed, it enhances. You know, what, what, what does enhance mean? I have trouble with words. It made clearer the speeches? That the speeches, you said? He said made clearer the speeches. Yeah, something like that? Okay, help them out. Or help me out helping it. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. I know what to do. Uh, we can ask. Uh, who should we ask, Brad? Uh, Julie Grable. I mean, Roy Garth. Oh, God. Sorry. Well, Good um, beginning. I liked it um, because... Um, well, I mean, reading it last time with the group and then go, going over it again since yeah. then, I was yeah. able to see and that... what effect did that have on your present reading? Right. Your voice um, dropped a bit there. <coughs> well, I was able to see it in terms of more general principles, like I started thinking in terms of the Parmenides, for example. Don't, don't, don't. Did you notice she didn't answer the question? Oh. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, okay. Yeah. okay, okay. Here. I felt like a complete asshole reading that speech. Sir? I said, I felt like a com I was the guy that read the speech out loud last time, and I felt like a complete, well, to put it in nicer terms, jerk, reading it. It was like every sentence I was re reading was not connected with the sentence before. Uh, no, I want to know what effect that had on your present reading of Phaedrus's speech. What present? I'm, 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 excuse me. I'm, I'm the, uh, would you agree you're prepared to explore a speech time on page 78? I don't know about that. What effect did that have? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. 
I have the wrong well, question. I started looking to see it, you know, if there were any jokes in there. <laughs> or if there was something humorous in Phaedrus' speech. Or, you know, what was his intention. Oh, because now we're into Posanius' speech. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, and, and so after seeing how hilarious the first speech really was with irony, when I started reading the next one, I started going, is there a joke here somewhere that I'm missing? <laughs> is there, you know, is he pulling our leg a little bit somewhere that, uh, you know? Okay. Yes, Barbara, jump well, up. You know, the suggestion that we read the speeches, uh, that we read the conclusions first and kind of master them and then hold on to them and read the speech and see what evidence they put forth like use it as if it were a thesis state statement and that I found really clarifying to my reading I felt like it helped let the, spec let the um, appearances drop away therefore you went to page 82 is that correct? right, for Pausanias I did three of them okay. could you repeat that point Barbara? I was just saying that Pierre had suggested that we um that we read the conclusion to each speech and and uh, then hold it in the mind and then then start at the beginning of the speech and read through. But start with the conclusion and that that would, uh, and look for evidence to see if they substantiate that conclusion in the body of the speech. And when I did that, it really helped my seeing. It, it, I felt like I was uh, seeing more like 60% instead of 10% of what was there. Thank you. Sure. So Pausanias is a trick. Right, agree. The suggestion was made to read the next speech, Pausanias, in terms of focusing first on his conclusion, yeah. which is on page 82, and then go back to 78 and read it through with that in mind. Mm -hmm. And Barbara said she found that? That very helpful. Well, what it organized what, what you were reading, it let you see if he in, did in fact make those points or not yeah. in the body. Yeah. Uh, do you think you should be a good person to read the conclusion on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, how about it? This is Pausanias' great speech on the nature of love. Go ahead. A subject which I presume uh, we all have an interest in. Good. Let's see, where did I begin the conclusion? That's my question. Uh, well, I think I just used the last... Paragraph, right. I think that's okay. where, where, where are you going? Where are you going? Well, the second paragraph on 82, I think, was what I used. Okay. Um, this is the love of the heavenly goddess. Love both heavenly and precious to city and men. For it compels both lover and beloved to take all possible care for virtue. But all other loves belong to the other goddess, the common one. Here, my dear Phaedrus, you have my humble contribution on love, as well as I can make it at the end. So, okay. Now, what are you going to pull out of that? <clears throat> yeah. That we should now prepare to look at the whole in terms of that. Yeah, well, it seems to me that one of the most important points is that, um, that love, love is heavenly and precious, but it compels, it should have the force of a compulsion to the beloved and, and the lover to take all possible care for virtue or excellence, right? So it's like a, it, it's a powerful thing and it can, what, enforce its will, right? And that it says, to, and the fact that it's all possible care, mm -hmm. right? All possible in every way. Well, I think if you, if you have that in your mind, then you start reading that yes, book. Yes, yes, good, good. Any other reflection? <clears throat> Well, there's two, two goddesses. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Two goddesses. Jump in. Two goddesses. <clears throat> Heavenly goddess. Right-o. Common goddess. Right-o. Starts boldly, right forward. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay. Shall we assume, therefore, we've got it and we can go further? 
I, when you say that, I <laughs> never assume that. No. That would be a very folky move to me. Oh. But I thought we were supposed to take that and then go back over the Not if we don't have it. No. I just exactly thought I'd ask, what do you find so hot about the last paragraph? Oh. And Barbara's making fun of me. Well, I want to add, I want to add something that I think is really funny. I'll take it. Humorous. Well, heavenly. The word for heavenly is uranios, and it means it comes from the word uranos yes. or heaven. Yeah. But uranos is also the name of the the dude who uh, had his genitals chopped <coughs> off, yeah. and that this goddess was born from the result in the foam of the, the sperm. I mean the in the in the foam. So yes. we call that one heavenly. Yeah. And the other one who's the daughter of Zeus and Dion, it both gods to be common or pandemos, <coughs> pandemos all people mm -hmm. like those kind. It's pretty humorous, I think. <laughs> I'll go for that. Why? Would you like to draw this, the sperm and the ocean? And the no, that's okay. I, okay, okay, okay. I'm not so good with sperm and ocean. Okay, okay. <laughs> that must have hurt when he had his balls chopped off like that. Yeah. Um. Okay, so then we could then go right ahead and jump in. Okay. All right. Okay. I do have a question though. What is it? Um if I were to ask you what is the domain for the heavenly goddess? Hmm. The city and Hmm. We had two answers. The heavenly love, the heavenly love is, uh, would you read it again? Because uh, my This is the is love poor. of the heavenly goddess. Love both heavenly and precious to city and man. For it compels both lover and beloved to take all possible care for virtue. Um, yeah, could you, I, I, it's my reading. Could you read it again? I, I lost it. Love both, this is the love of the heavenly goddess. Love both heavenly and precious to city and men. Thank you. For it compelled. Oh, to city. Ooh, nasty. I didn't see that at all. By the way, oh. uh, <laughs> if this heavenly goddess is precious to city and men, and there's another kind of love that's... Um, common. For who? Since yeah, this includes... Since we include city, city and city men. And men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's supposed to be... In fact, it's, it should be... Animals. The realms have a lot in common, actually. Oh, wait a moment, wait a moment. The heavenly goddess, this love is precious to city and men. Uh -huh. And the common love, therefore, must be to others, to people not living in cities, <laughs> nor, nor are they men. men. Yeah. men. Uh, uh, who would they be? Children. But the, the Children. Loeb translation is even more inclusive. It says uh, precious to both public and private life. Um, no. What's left? No. No. So we'd want to know uh, mm -hmm. what domain does the common yes. love have since it's... Well, it says all... Okay, popular. it's just a minor question yeah, I have. Oh, it's a popular. Wow. Agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what was the point? The other one doesn't seem to have any domain left. Yeah, <laughs> therefore we can leave that. Uh, leave it's it. only a minor point. Uh, <laughs> no? Uh, oh. 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 And uh, does he have any reservations about it? Does he have any it's all he could do at the moment. Right. Of course. As well as he can make it. Wait a minute. Of course. Right. Okay. Okay. But he shouldn't have that reservation. Sense. He shouldn't have to say that because, of course, it's as you said. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's play. Ah. <coughs> well, if um. if love is both heavenly and precious to the city, it should be also functioning. In All the just for a moment. Yeah, what was the point? Well, I don't know. If, What's the point, please? Uh, if it's to take 
all possible care for virtue, and uh, shouldn't it be functioning in this very speech for him? So that when he says, as well as I could make it at the moment, shouldn't that be a rep- shouldn't would not, love be functioning in this very moment to help him make an excellent <coughs> speech? Would it be? Are you asking it? Should, it should be able to, given his presentation of what he thinks love is. That it should be helping him right now to present. Okay. Do, do I look no, puzzled? Okay. I don't know. It doesn't look mm, like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not clear about the point you're making. Oh. Well, maybe Come not on. Me. True. Okay. Go back to it. Okay. Thing, shall we get a reader and try it now? Before you do that, I have a question about, and this just is the way the phrases are. Uh, love, <laughs> this is the love of the heavenly goddess. So. It, is it the heavenly goddess that is love, or is it that this is the love of a heavenly goddess? That the, the, the phrasing seems to not represent love, but it's love of a heavenly goddess. So what is? Yeah, that's another way of reading it. Yeah, that's there. No, no. And then it depends on the word. This, Trina. Right. This is the love. This. Right. Whether it goes back. To the goddess or to... No, no. It, it goes... The word... Oh, you'd see. have to decide that from the text. Okay. We got a reader? Jump in. Okay. But before... I know... You got another one? Yeah. Love both heavenly and precious. I don't understand an, ad, uh, an adverb. Is it heavenly an adverb and precious to a city? Uh, I'm... Just, so wouldn't it be just totally that good. love is heavenly to a city? You don't have a question. I, I don't You're framing that. it as if you have yeah, a question. You have to put some more meat on the bones. What does it mean to have a love as heavenly to a city? That should follow from the word this, should it not? Oh, okay. So it should go should back? It? Yeah. We should okay. Find out. So I got my question. Okay. Oh, sorry, right. could I should just... Be? Ingmar, you just reminded me that when you... St- the reason that heavenly is an interesting term for that, that goddess is because that she's described as having no violence in her, hmm. right? And for a goddess that has no violence in her, her, the origin of her is very violent. That's all that I saw in that description. It's, it's called, she's called gentle, and um, she is the older and has no violence in her, right? And if you, if you watch the way that heavenly love functions, that's not a that's not a no violence in her kind of gal, so to speak. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Therefore, we open it up. Want to open up the first uh, uh, couple of sentences and let's see what we do. Me, actually, could we get someone else? Yeah, to sure. It's sorry. complex. To, Good. To try Re- to go. If someone else doesn't want to read, oh, Danny does. Go ahead. I don't want to read. I was actually going to make one yes, comment please. about the the two contrasts. The one that we had read. Phaedrus' speech ends with him saying uh, something about the power, that it provides the power for all virtue. And uh, Pausanias' speech ends with him saying uh, that it, it, uh, Sorry, I had it in my head when I okay, dropped okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. Then you'll be constructing this one. Right, Kurt? Yes, sir. You should be going this way, not this way. They are talking about two kinds of gods of love, are they not? Okay, yeah. And you should be able to collect, should you not, all the things said about the heavenly and one about the common. Agree? Okay. Were you going to read? First couple of sentences? Sure. Yeah, please. Uh, starting on page 78. Yeah, please. Such or something like it was the speech of Phaedrus. From there. Yeah. Such or something like it was the speech of Phaedrus, as related to me by Aristodemus. And after Phaedrus, there were some others which 
He did not remember well. Okay, bang. Mm -hmm. They were not worth remember. remembering. Oh. Remember that earlier, that claim? There you go. Go ahead. <clears throat> so he passed them by and reported the speech of Pausanias, who said, I do not think, Phaedrus, that the rules were properly laid down. Good. Change, change in the rules. I wonder how many are going to uh, change the rules as the speeches proceed. Go ahead. <clears throat> I do not think, Phaedrus, that the rules were pop properly laid down. I mean that we should just simply be law and love. For if love were one, that would do. But really, he is not one. And since he is not one, it is more proper to say first which we are to praise. Then I will try to set this right and say first which love we ought to praise, and then praise that God worthily. For we all know that Aphrodite is never without a love. If she were one, love would be one. But since there are really two, there must be two loves. Of course, there are two goddesses. One, I take it, is older and motherless, daughter of heaven, whom we call heavenly Aphrodite. The other, younger, daughter of Zeus and Dione, whom we call, as you know, common. It must be then, you see, that love too, the one who works with this Aphrodite, should be called common love, and the other heavenly love. It is true, we must praise all gods, but I must try to say what is the province of each of these two. For the performance of every action is, in itself, neither beautiful nor ugly. So what we are doing now, whether drinking or singing or speaking, is not itself beautiful, but according as it is done, so it comes out in the doing. When it is done well and rightly, it is beautiful. But when not rightly done, it is ugly. Just so with being in love and with love himself. He is not all beautiful and worthy to be praised, but only so far as he leads to right loving. The love then... Um, which, okay. That fits? Everything fits? Is that right? Jump in. Um, it seems that love is swapping gender. Say more. Maybe they translated it wrong? Okay. Before they were talking about Eros. Okay, uh, if we were to make this, now we're making this the two goddesses, right? Now we have a good deal of information. Okay, now we're going to apply it. And I imagine everything sits well with you. Um, Heavenly has no mother. Uh, what, what, what? Heavenly does not have a mother. And well, if they don't have a mother, then you can always say they had a splendid birth. <laughs> That's the Phaedrus principle. And, yeah, that's a, that's a <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hold on to that. I like no it. Material, no material. Okay. All right. Okay. Notice uh, uh, the standard being used uh, is excellent, of course. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Okay. Okay. Let's proceed further then. Um, no. And I'll... Why is it excellent, I'll, uh, why is it excellent here? What, what? What's the standard and why is it excellent? Make a point. No, no, no. no. Make you, a point. You just made a serious point yourself, so I was... My point? Making sure that I got but it. So far, we're getting an F. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apart from that, it's real fun. <laughs> but, okay, watch the next paragraph, okay? Hold it, Jeff! Okay, well, I don't, I don't know about the whole thing, but I see one problem that's going to carry through the whole speech. It says, for the performance of every action is in itself neither beautiful nor ugly. That's absurd. Like, you know, robbing a bank is a bad thing. So it, it carries on through his whole thing of what love is or isn't. Because in the end, he says it's going for gratification and uh, 
he who gratifies a lover and does all kinds of absurd things which mm. people don't respect. And uh, <clears throat> what words he ending? Uh, yeah, he says that even if the guy is deceived going for this, it's okay because he, he didn't know he was deceived. So there's a lot of problems that, that lead from this going from appearance to reality. Yes, there are a lot of problems, especially taking that suggestion that we read the last paragraph first. Well, that's the second. But let's paragraph. skip that and keep on going. So far, we've got enough. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. No. I don't understand uh, this, what do you mean this you don't shift understand? When, in the sentence he says, it must be then you see that love too, the one who works with this Aphrodite, should be called common love? Of course. And, and the other heavenly love? Of course. But prior to that, he, he made a distinction between one of heavenly love and the other one's daughter of Zeus, right? Well, well, we'll get the distinctions later, I guess. No. Where's your problem? Well... Why is he calling them both of Aphrodite if the sentence before he's calling one of the daughter of Zeus? Or am I reading that wrong? Why would the Zeus and Dion be a heavenly love? Right? Is that what you're asking? Well, one's heavenly and one's earthly, anyhow, right? So we'll go into the parentage later then. Maybe we just go into the next paragraph. So Zeus, Zeus is common. Because you... Uh, right? <laughs> Better... I think the next paragraph might even be interesting, Brad. Why don't you read it? Sure. Um, the love, then, which belongs to common Aphrodite, is really and truly common and works at random. And this is the love which, is, which inferior men feel. Such persons love firstly women as well as boys. Next, when they love, they love bodies rather than, rather than souls. And next, they choose the most foolish persons they can. <laughs> for they look only to getting something done, and care nothing whether well or not. So what happens to them is that they act at random, whether they do good or whether they do its opposite. For this love springs from the goddess, which is much younger than the other. And in her birth had a share of both female and male. But the other love springs from the heavenly goddess, who firstly had no share of the female, but only of the male. Next, she is older and has no violence in her. Consequently, those inspired by this love turn to the male, because they feel affection, they feel affection um, rather for what is stronger and has more mind. One could recognize even in boy love, those who are driven by this love, pure and simple. For they do not <coughs> fall in love with those who are little boys, but with those who begin to have mind. And that it is nearly when they show the down on their chins. For those who begin to love them from this age, I think, are ready to be with them always, for all their lives, and to live with them, and to live with them together. They do not wish to get a boy in the foolishness of youth and deceive him and laugh at him and go off running to another. There ought to have been a law against loving little boys that a great deal of earnestness might not have been spent on what is uncertain. For it is uncertain how little boys will turn out as regards of vice and virtue, both of body and soul. Now those who are good, who are... Now those who are good place, this law uh, before them so un unbidden. But it ought, to, it ought to be made compulsory for those common lovers. Just as we make it compulsory as for we can, that they shall not make love to freeborn women. For these are, for these are they who bring reproach on the whole thing. So that some dare to say that it is ugly to gratify lovers. They say this with their eye on those common ones, when they see their tactlessness and injustice. Since I suppose nothing done decently and lawfully could fairly bring discredit. That's crazy. Amazing.
Yeah, okay. Uh, list it, please. Come on. What do you find? The heavenly love is gay. Heavenly is gay, okay. But it's selective in the boys that it buggers. <laughs> when the down is on the shin, then you can get them. We should have been a log. That's just kind of feeling. Okay. Look, a good point was made, Sorry. and he lost it. No, I didn't. Would you say you might? By joking. No, I didn't. Come on, make your jokes consistent with your vision. Then you have more fun. All right. Show me the way. Really? Come on. Got a point. Come on. Like, stick with the idea. They're all drinking. So. <laughs> Is it possible that all the ways in which people can get in relationships are expressed among these people giving speeches? If so... This is a way in which a certain kind of love is expressing itself. Now tell me what you find. It feels well, like he's pleading his case for heavenly love over common love. Go ahead. And Talk to me about it. What's the difference? That which one has virtue? Heavenly love. Heavenly love. Heavenly love. That's right. right. And he's just stating his case for why heavenly love is better. And this is spiritual. Well, it took Carrie... More? Um, to, to carry on. He's, it, I, I feel as though he's saying it's noble. Is heavenly. vulgar. Vulgar? Well, I don't know. What, what do you want to call it? Oh, what do you want to call the other, the common? Um, Would you take help? Yes. <laughs> I think, well, one of the things that he says right off is... Yeah, wait a minute, hold on. Oh. Well, actually, what I found with regards to heavenly love is that um, is the elder, has no violence, is stronger, and has more mind. Okay, look, there's a lot of interesting points being made, and he's having a lot of fun, and they're drinking wine, and they're all coming together, right, and the guy's revealing himself, okay. So, why don't you just find a good quote that describes this heavenly love? Is it possible you can find it on page 79? Yeah, at the very top. Well, go right ahead and read it for well, us. But the other love springs from the heavenly goddess, who firstly has no share of the female. Okay. Fine. Huh. So that captures okay. the No share in the female. But only of the male. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're inspired towards the male. Go ahead. She is elder, has no violence, and consequently those inspired by this love turn to the male. What? No violence. Therefore, how does it look? Go ahead, finish the sentence. Because mm -hmm. they feel affection rather for what is stronger and has more mind. Good. So That's his statement, okay? Women don't have mind and they're not stronger. But Agree? This is his statement. Yes or no? Come on. Yes. yes. Thank you. Don't lose it. Yeah. All right? What are we going to do now? See if there's any evidence. Look for the evidence. In the examples. Yeah. So keep going, please. One could recognize, even in boy love, those who are driven by this love. Okay, look here. What kind of boy love is he talking about? Go ahead. Those who are driven by this love, pure and simple. For they do not fall in love with those who are little boys. Right, not little boys. Right. No, not little boys. But with those who begin to have mind. No. Great. 13, 12, or maybe 6. Mm. When do they have mind? Now, come on. 
and that is nearly when they show the down on their chins. Thank you, I know. Hey, any of you uh, know what age that is? 13. When do boys begin to have down, not hair, down on their chins? About 14 or 15. Not hair, that's hair, 14. That's what I thought it was. What is down? What age? Well, I don't know what down is. Either do I. That's why I asked. I don't have to know, but it ain't hair. What chicks have? What chicks have? So it's not hair. It's like... It was before? Children. Oh, by the way, well, I have the same question on the other term. Uh, any of you guys ever had any uh, younger brothers or n no younger kids? Any no? no? Oh, when when do boys begin to have mine? Six. Three. Three, four, five, six, five. Begin with two, three, four, five. I mean, we want to figure out which one he's after, don't we? Yeah. He's disguising it, but you read it, you can tell me what he's talking about. Because it is virtuous. Very young. Well, kids have mind. No, that's why this expression is very important. Talkers have mind. Right? Hmm. Look here. Watch the word nearly. It's when they nearly have down on their chin. Mm -hmm. It's before even that. Agree? Wow. Yes or no? Yes. How important is the word nearly? Very, Very important. important. Mm -hmm. So it should be like pre-puberty. So what would you say? What? what, what? Yeah. He's said to... Eight. It's, it's the age going down? Yeah. yeah. Ah, the age is going down. Yeah. Oh. But it looks like it's going up. What? I mean, it, it, he, the way he presents it, it looks like... No, no, he's presenting it the way he's presented it. Yeah. It's the way you're reading it. That's true. You thought it was going up. It's true. That's true. I was thinking of my grandson at five, he had a good mind. All right. Yeah. Come on, four, you have five. to take the read it straight now. Three, four, five, two, three, four. All right. It says even in boy love. Uh, you have to. As if as if this is this is a when you say even in boy love, it's as if it's in all other kinds of, of male loving, but it will even show up in this poultry example. That's the only example he deals with. Yeah, but watch what he says, let's go a little bit further. He doesn't want to get a kid who is in the foolishness of youth. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Proof. <laughs> Keep going. Let's get the reader. For those who begin to love them from this age, I think, are ready to be with them always for all their lives and to live with them together. They do not wish to get a boy in the foolishness of youth. You mean when they get mine? <laughs> and then deceive him and laugh at him and go off right okay. into another. Okay. <laughs> you got to read the sentence again. Which one is deceiving? Four. Come on. For those who begin to love. Thank you. Put more stress on the word begin. For those who begin to love. For those who begin to love them from this age. I think are ready to be with them always. Oh, then this is the kind of relationship where this guy really wants to be with them always forever. Is that right? Yeah. Is, is that the guy. claim, yes or no? Yes. 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 Thank you. Read it with that in mind. Go ahead. And to live with them together, and they do not wish to get a boy in the foolishness of youth and then deceive him and laugh. Oh, they wouldn't do that. No. Right? No. Right? They wouldn't deceive him and <laughs> laugh. No. And go off running to another. No, they would never do that. <laughs> no. Go ahead. There ought to have been a law against loving little boys. Yeah, there ought to be. But. <laughs> why? Hey, why should there be a law against loving little boys? Because so that you won't waste a lot of your effort on, on something. So who does the law protect? The lover. The lover. The law is going to protect him to keep this little kid from 
messing up from his life. from from wasting his energy up. wasting his energy on a little the kid by and his sincerity go out and it's play ball yeah. you don't know how it'll, how it'll turn out or surf or anything else is that right mm -hmm. come on yeah go ahead there ought to have been a law against loving little boys that a great deal of earnestness might not have been spent on what is uncertain <laughs> So he's picking someone who is uncertain, <laughs> right? Come on. Mm -hmm. Or it is uncertain how little boys will turn out. Yeah. As After all, they may not stay in the relationship. Mm -hmm. As regards vice and virtue. Yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. Both of body and soul. Right, and as regards vice and virtue, which goes against his principle. If he says there, it's uncertain that how they will turn out, then, then it doesn't. Then love doesn't do what he says it's going to do. Oh my gosh! Right. Oh. Which is compel people to oh. all care for virtue. Okay. Right. Now what you need is artistry, which is where I come in. Artistry. <laughs> <laughs> Grab next sentence. Right. Now those who are good. Now those who are good place. Good. Oh, I see. Now those who are good place this law before themselves. They the place this law before themselves. <laughs> because who does it protect? <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a pedophile. No, you're right. Is that right? Come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah go ahead. Come on. I, I should give it to my... You know, but uh, it ought to be made compulsory for those common lovers. What, what does he want? It ought to be made compulsory. This law. For the common lovers. Yeah. Hmm. That's the ones that Love are inferior. Energy. For it is un, uh, it's compulsory for those common just as we make it compulsory as far as we can, that they shall not make love to free-born women. And how? That's the worst thing you can do. <laughs> Bad law. Right? Free-born women. Don't fool around with a free-born girl. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead? for the... What's a free born Ones that are slave-born. Yeah, slave yeah. Slave yeah. yeah. Slave yeah. That's heaven -born. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> For these are they who bring reproach on the whole thing. Yeah. They condemn. Someone goes out and makes love to a free-born woman. It ruins the whole... It, I mean, makes... It, comic the whole idea of love. So huh, that, should be for little boys. Go ahead. So that some dare to say that it is ugly to gratify lovers. Oh, What's his goal? To gratify lovers. He wants to be gratified. Some people think it's ugly, ugly to gratify lovers. Pedophiles. Well, what does he want the kid to do? Gratify. Gratify him. It ought to be a law. And he wants a law to make sure it happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> it should be a law. Yes. <laughs> Get these young kids, line them up, and teach them about this law. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, Get, keep going. They say this with their eye on those common ones. Uh, let's see. For these are, are they who bring reproach on the whole thing, so that some dare to say that it is ugly to gratify lovers. They say this with their eye on those common ones, not on him when they see their tactlessness and injustice, since I suppose nothing done decently and lawfully could fairly bring discredit. Yeah. So if he makes a law, then he wouldn't no, be discredited. No. And that law he's talking about. Right. So just make up a law and he'll be all right. Yeah. That's heavenly. This is the pedophilia heavenly <laughs> Okay. Notice it's very heavenly and it's following and his arguments are, are what they are. <laughs> It's okay, he's going to he, hey, he's going to nail it down further. All right. yeah. Someone else now to get another yeah. reader. All right. Thank you. Again, here and in Lacedaemon, the law about love is confusing, but that in other states is easy to understand. In Ellis and Boeotia, and where people are not clever speakers, it is simply laid down that it is right to gratify lovers. And no one, young or old, would call it ugly. Right, there would be a law. Yeah. yeah. Right. If, when they're not clever speakers. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. a precedence for it. Yeah. They're not yeah. <laughs> and they're not. Yeah, go ahead. As I think they wish not to have the trouble of convincing the young, 
Because they cannot argue. How do you think of that one? How can you argue? I mean, it's like, yeah. But in many other parts of Ionia, it is considered ugly, where they are under barbarians. For the barbarians, because of the rule of despots, call this ugly, as well as philosophy and sports. I suppose it is profitable to their lovers that the subjects should not be great in spirit, or make strong friendships and unions, which things love is accustomed to implant more than anything else. Hmm. In fact, our own despots here found that out by experience. For the love of Aristogiton and the friendship of Harmodius, grown strong, brought their rule to an end. So where it has been laid down as ugly to gratify lovers, that was from the evil condition of those that made the laws, the grasping habits of the rulers, and the cowardice of the ruled. And where it was thought simply good, that was from the laziness of soul and those who made the laws. But in these parts, much of the law and custom is better, and as I said, it is not easy to understand. Especially after listening to me for a while. <laughs> Should I go on? Hmm. Okay, well, how does it look now? Did he shift? How did, did it go through any changes when you go? Yeah. It's like he shifted. From, is the law now um, gratifying the lover? That was from the evil condition of those that made the laws. So where it has been laid down as ugly to gratify lovers, that was from the evil condition of those that made the laws. So I don't understand how he's, it seems like he shifted in saying now the law, I didn't understand that sentence. But isn't that an agreement with what you just read? She doesn't have a question. Yet. She's, what, she's going through it, right? She's going through it and she's going to try to come up with a question. Confusion, you can't answer. Good point. So my question was, uh, what's the standard he's using for virtue? Gratifying the lover. Pardon? Gratifying the lover. Gratifying the lover. Partially. That's not the standard. That's the object. The law? There's an ethic. Every one of these has an ethic. What is his ethic? The subjects should be great in spirit, make strong friendships and unions. Ugly and Winning uh, is sort of the uh, the highest. It's the high mead that if if he can get the the beloved or um, or whatever, then it's it's uh, beautiful. And if not, then it's ugly. Not not enough. Not clear enough. Look here. We're looking for the principle. That's where we're going, aren't we? So, would you agree on page 78? We have a principle. It is true, we must praise all gods. But I must try to say, what is the province of each of these two? Here comes the principle. For the performance of every action is in itself neither beautiful nor ugly. So what we are doing now, whether drinking or singing or speaking, is not itself beautiful, but according as it is done. So it comes out in the doing. When it's done well and rightly, it's beautiful. 
And when not done rightly, it's ugly. So what does he want the kid to do? Love him rightly. Gratify him. In what way, though? Very well. See, that's a principle. Oh, I see. Oh, a beautiful way. It, see, the same act, the same act could go in this common, this column, or this column. Right. But what would be considered well and rightly? So it would mean that it would, be, slave. it would be to gratify. When it's done beautiful, right? When it's done well and rightly, it's beautiful. When not rightly done, it's ugly. What does it have to be done? Well and rightly. Beautifully. 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 Then it's right. So how much the kid do it? Beautifully. 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 And if so, he's in this column. It's, if not, it's this way. Because after all, he wants it done to him. Beautifully. Beautifully. Is that right? Is that what he's saying? Wait a minute. Is that what he's saying? Yes, sir. <coughs> That's a standard, is it not? It's also... Uh, Just so with being in love, for with love himself, etc., etc., right? It's in the right loving, and it has to be done. What's the key? Beautifully. Done well and rightly. And if beautifully, then it's right. Well, it was if it was rightly, it was beautiful. It's not right and then beautiful. You sure? Mm. Right. So he's huh. gonna. He's gonna. It's the. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, it's the. It's the ideal uh, standard for sophistry as well. To speak right. To speak. I don't right. know anything about Socrates' speech. No sophistry. Oh, oh, go ahead. That to to sound good to convince others that you know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, sophist. Oh yeah, yeah, this is sophist. This is. And uh, Prodicus, his teacher, was mentioned earlier by Aristarchus. Yeah. Yeah. Here it says here, when it is done well and rightly, it is beautiful. That sounds like it rightly first and beautiful, and when not rightly done, it's ugly. I mean that. When it's done, so it becomes out in the doing. When it's done well and rightly, it's beautiful. Yeah. And when it's not done, it's ugly. Right. So what does he want? Rightly. Do it. Well and rightly. What's the standard? It's right. Right. That's right. That's good. We need it. Well. And done well and right. Yeah. So right. That well. Then it's going to be what? Beautiful. 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 Thank you. Uh, the well is beautifully better translated as beautiful hollows. Pardon me, sir? Sure. The what's translated as well is better translated as beautifully. Yeah. It's okay. done beautifully yeah. and yeah. rightly that yeah. it is beautiful. Yeah. That's yeah. Odd. So what's he doing? What's he doing? He wants it to be done beautifully to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yes. Right? Is and that, he wants a lot. Because the word well is what? You're saying from the Greek it's pretty obvious that behind the word well is beautiful. Beautiful. Mm. Um, mm. Are you going to use some artistry? To pick and that? See, that's the trouble with kids because they may not know how to do it beautifully. And therefore they belong over in this column. They're dopes. <laughs> that's what he's saying. That's what he's saying? If that is what he is saying. No, so. Now look here. Good. <laughs> Sorry. Let, let's go one more, okay? One more paragraph. This is even better, okay? It'll make it better. Go ahead. Do it loud, please. Uh, we're going to start it here again, here. Or consider. In, uh, Lacadamon, is that where we're? For consider. Oh, I just Next wanted to page. add that um, what you just said. Uh, coheres with the, uh, the lobe translation of the conclusion where it says, for this compels lover and beloved alike to feel a zealous concern for their own virtue. Yeah. That uh, their own virtue. Their own uh, virtue. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Can you have your own version? <laughs> where, where are you? Little? For consider that it is called better to love openly than secretly. Thesis, right? Big point. And especially to love the highest and noblest born, right? Especially to love the highest and the noblest born. Right. What kind of kid does he want? A prince. Rich one. The noblest. highest and the noblest born. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. Openly. Let's see what he does with that. Yeah, really. Even, Even if they are uglier than the others. <laughs> what kind of kid is he going for then? Rich one. A rich one. Rich one and, and big pockets. Kings and queens. <laughs> no kings. Or no. He wants to go to the ruling class. Whether yeah. they're, they're dogs. Whether they're ugly or not doesn't make any difference, so long as they're what? Got a member of the class. Good. Go ahead. Now look here. I know some people like that. And consider how wonderfully all encourage the lover. Everybody does, don't they? Not as if he were doing something ugly, which if he wins is thought beautiful, but if he does not win, ugly. And how the law has allowed the lover in trying to win to be praised for doing extraordinary things, which if a man should dare to do in pursuit of anything else except this, uh, <laughs> or should even wish to accomplish, he'd, be, he'd, be, he'd reap the greatest disgrace. Yeah, that shows a great deal of virtue, doesn't it? That whatever you're doing under the aspect of love, it's what? If it were done in any other way, it would be disgraceful. It would be disgraceful. Yeah, it's heavenly. For if wishing... Well, here, here's a good example. For if wishing to get money from someone or to win public office, or to get any other power, a man should behave as lovers do towards their beloved, begging and beseeching them in their petitions, and swearing solemn oaths and sleeping in their doors, and being willing to do slavish services such as no slave would do, he would be hindered both by friends and his enemies from doing his business thus. Friends would be ashamed of such things and warn him. The enemies would upbraid him for flattery and bad manners. But the lover has a grace when he does all this. And the laws allows him to do it without discredit. Right? Wow. So it comes out the opposite. As a thing wholly beautiful. Hey, strangest of all, he alone is all, as the people say, is pardoned by the gods for breaking an oath he's sworn. So what can you do? Break oaths. Right, remember he's going to keep it for the rest of his life, but he can break life. oaths now. Yeah. Ah, go ahead. Let's get someone else. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the, le- the rest of the sentence is very important. Okay. For it is said an oath of love simply has no force. Thus, both gods and men. But, right? Oaths have no force. Remember this? Love, great? love oaths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the lover. Has no force. But he was going to stay always for the rest of his life. But these oaths have no force. No force. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Go ahead. Thus, both gods and men have given full might. Oh, pardon me. Full license to the lover, as the law here says. So far, then, one might think it was considered wholly beautiful in this city, both to love and to feel affection for a lover. But on the other hand. When fathers place tutors over the loved ones and forbid them to converse with their lovers, and the tutor is ordered to see to it, when age mates and companions reproach them if they see anything like this going on, and lastly, when the older men do not stop these from reproaching.